Welcome to this short service of readings and reflections on life's pilgrim journey. We gather near the place that St. David found closeness with God, knowing God best as Christians have done throughout the ages, as Creator Father, Redeeming Son, and Life-Giving Holy Spirit. We pray we may also know God's closeness, His compassion, His love, and his wide direction in our lives. We begin with the collect, the special prayer for St. David, who called others to be joyful, to keep the faith, and to be faithful in the little things of life. Let us pray. God our Father, you gave St. David to the people of Wales to uphold the faith. Encouraged by his example, May we joyfully hold fast to the things which lead us to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading from Scripture this morning is the Psalm of David, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We can all recognise these words from Psalm 23 as a beautiful description of the abiding presence of Jesus in our lives. His peace, his joy, his presence, filling us to overflowing with no shadow in between. But here comes the point of it. In this message, there's also a message of revival. We are to recognise our cup running over. And that is normally a daily experience of the believer walking with Jesus. But that just isn't in the lives of practically all of us. Those cups running over get pretty muddled up. Other things besides joy of the Lord flow out. We are often much more aware of the emptiness or dryness or harshness or disturbance or fear and worry than we are of the fullness of his presence and overflowing joy and peace. And now we come to another point. So what stops that moment? What stops this flow of joy and love? For the answer is sin. But we by no means usually accept or recognise that we have sin. There are many more convenient names for these disturbances of our hearts. We say it is never sin that causes us to speak impatiently. We say it is tiredness that causes us to speak a sharp word. We say it is the pressure of work which causes us to lose our peace, get worried, speak hastily. So what are cups running over? Of course the Spirit witnessing to Jesus, if we keep that in our hearts and minds. He is our peace, our joy, our life. And it is the Spirit that works never ceasingly to offer the witness to him within us. But what can stop that witness? Can nerves or tiredness, pressure of circumstances, or difficult people? 
Paul's cry was, who or what can separate me from the love of God? Can tribulation or persecution or things present or things to come? No, he says, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we have many examples of people who live their faith, shine out as fine, active Christians. And today we are remembering Richard, Bishop of Chichester, born in what we know as Droitwich in 1197. At first he worked hard for his yeoman father to restore the family fortunes. He went on to study in Oxford, in Paris, in Bologna, as an ecclesiastical lawyer. On his return to England in 1235, he was made Chancellor of Oxford and eventually Chancellor to the Archbishop of Canterbury, Edmund of Abingdon. When Richard eventually became Bishop of Chichester, he was seen as a model diocesan bishop, going around his diocese on foot, visiting and caring for his clergy and all people, and generally being accessible to all who needed his ministry. He insisted that the sacraments be administered without payment and with proper dignity. And whilst on a recruitment campaign for the Crusades, he fell ill and he died. He died on the 3rd of April, 1253. And his mortal remains were translated to Chichester on this day in 1276. Part of a reading from Life of St. Richard by Ralph Bocking, who was a contemporary and he writes, after a life shining with the glory of his miracles and renowned for the purity of his virtues, in which, following Christ, blessed Richard learned constantly to bear the cross on which Christ was crucified for the world and the world for Christ. In order to make a glorious end to his life at the foot of the cross, in service and to and with Christ, he undertook the preaching of the cross for the relish of the Holy Land, a task entrusted to him by the Holy See. And Christ's glorious presence gave Richard the enthusiasm, the joy, the hope, the encouragement to be an incredible priest and preacher. And he set out seeking to glory, but not only in the commission which was received by him from Rome, but rather in the wounds of Christ, crying out with the apostle, may God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Richard passed from this world at the age of about 56, and in the ninth year of his episcopate. A man, a shining example, a shining example of the ministry that we hope, pray, and really come to expect. But it's good to think of him walking the diocese, yes, walking the diocese, to keep in contact with the clergy, and with the people. And we know as priests ourselves, if we walk about in the parish, it's then that people stop and chat to us, and we can stop and chat to them. If you whiz by in a car, you're gonna miss all sorts of people who probably need a quiet word. So we have a fine example in Richard of Chichester. You are invited now to ponder your own pilgrim journey. Perhaps you want to reflect over many years, or perhaps just a few days, or merely you pilgrims as the journey of this morning. 
Ask yourself, what brought you here? Where are you now in life? What are you seeking? Let us pray. We pray for ourselves and others who visit this cathedral today. We welcome the pilgrims who have walked this morning. Lord Jesus Christ, St. David, Saviour and Lord, you are the way, the truth and the life. Be our way. Give us grace to follow your lead. Courage to persevere when the going is tough. And when we stumble, let us not be afraid to take hold of your outstretched hand as you offer us a fresh start. Be our truth. Give us your wisdom so we may know how to walk in the paths of honesty and integrity. Be our life. Revive us when we falter. Refresh us when we tire and bring us to share in your risen life, now and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us in the language of your choice. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So now maybe you would like to offer your own silent prayers. Think and take a while. Maybe you wish to reflect on how you desire to go forward from here. Remember, in compassionate love, Jesus Christ calls you to follow him, promising in return his companionship, his guidance, his strength and his peace, whatever life brings. Close with prayer. After which, please stay and enjoy this holy place for as long as you wish. And all who wish are invited to come forward for anointing with holy oil, with prayer for God's strength and guidance, healing and wholeness in life's unfolding journey. The Collect for today, Richard of Chichester. Most merciful Redeemer, who gave to your Bishop Richard a love of learning and a zeal for souls and devotion to the poor, grant that encouraged by his example, we may know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, awaken in us the zeal of your servant David, that we may joyfully follow you in singleness of heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.